Hi, Clara. Hi, Clara. Okay, I guess Clara can't hear us. Right. <laughs> okay. Hi, Clara. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to I use guess Clara this can't hear us. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't hearing you. There you go. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hi, Clara. Hi, how are you oh, doing? Oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Clara. I was trying to figure out how to use I guess Clara can't hear us. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't hearing you. There you go. Yeah, it's better. Oh, hang on. Okay. Hey, Robert. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hello, Robert. Hello, Hello Robert. Hello. How, are you? How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Very happy to be here, you know. <clears throat> Great. Hi, everyone. I'm Mark. Hi, Mark. Uh, I guess we can get started. I think we're... Great. Are you going to start it off, Mark, or how do we... Uh, sure. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to our second link gathering. Um, you heard from a few of us linkers last last week, and um, really excited that uh, the three of you could join us this week. We had actually great response uh, when we asked for volunteers, um, and so we we went with the first three people that responded. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, really looking forward to hearing from from you and and uh, seeing how you use Link and and hopefully. Uh, helping all of our mm -hmm. uh, audience we'll just learn a little bit more about Link and, and meet some of our community. Maybe I'll pass it over to Steve to kind of take it from here. Okay, well, I'll um, just say I'm very happy to see face-to-face uh, -face some people who use Link and that perhaps there'll be eventually at this gathering people who don't use Link but who are interested in language learning. And of course, I make my videos and I never see anyone at the other end so this is an opportunity to see some people, which is fun for me. So with that, uh, Mark, you're in charge as to who you want to go first. And uh, since I always get a lot of chance to talk, I'm gonna mute my microphone and listen to what other people have to say. I, and I, I should add one other thing. You know, it's very tough right now. Everyone is forced to stay at home and we all nervously look at the news of what's going on. And so to keep our minds on something positive and, and constructive like language learning is good for us, not only keeps us away from thinking about what's happening, but also at the end of it, we'll end up better in our languages. So I'll pass it back to Mark. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, probably, uh, what, what, Clara, why don't, why don't we start with you? You were the first person that responded uh, uh, on the forum and maybe introduce yourself. Tell us where you are, uh, what, uh, which language or languages you're studying, and then maybe uh, explain to us how you, you use Link. I, I don't know if you any of you are interested in uh, sharing your screen to show how you use Link, but if, you, if you'd if you like to, there should be a share screen option uh, on the bottom of your window. So uh, when you're ready, click share screen and, and take it away. Um, and, and if you have any issues, just, just let me know. But um, yeah, Clara, please, the floor is yours. All right, <laughs> first of all, thank you for having me. And uh, I've prepared a little bit of stuff here in my screen. So I'm just going to share it with you. But first of all, just to introduce myself, uh, my name is Clara. I come from Italy, uh, central Italy, so near Florence, about an hour away. And uh, for both in my work and private life, I use six foreign languages on a daily basis almost. Um, apart from English, it's going to be uh, basically Russian, uh, Japanese, Korean, Spanish. Uh, Portuguese, etc. But right now I'm trying to get to a pretty good level in Korean. So I'm just going to show you how I use the link uh, for me in order to uh, improve my Korean because I've managed to have a lot of Korean friends right now. So I'm trying to have try to have meaningful conversations with them basically. Um, so one thing I wanted to uh, show you is that is how I use Link uh, in order to do two things, which is basically what Steve talks about a lot, which is uh, learning the big picture 
versus learning the nuts and bolts, the little bits and pieces of the language. So I wanted to show you how I use Link for both of these things. So let me just try to share. There we go. Here we have my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Yep. All right, awesome. So I'm a huge fan of learning uh, through YouTube learning languages because that's how I've learned English in the first place. And uh, I've managed to learn different languages with that as well. So I'm trying to do it with Korean. A lot of people say it's not easy to find Korean uh, videos with subtitles. But as you can see here, I've got a playlist with things of interest. I've got about 400 videos. So that's a lot of learning. <laughs> that's a lot of learning. It's going to take me more than a year to go through all of this. But uh, these are not, of course, videos that I've chosen like will and nilly just going on YouTube. These are videos that are in line with my interests. So I'm just going to share you this one here just to give you an example uh, for people who don't know how to import from YouTube. But you see here we got the Korean subtitles, but you have actually Japanese, English, whatever. So these videos are awesome to use for learning. And then you can go ahead here and import, import them onto link. Uh, you see here, everything's done. Korean, you can choose uh, the course you wanna put it in and you're done. Just to give you an example, there you go. We're here. This is a lesson I've made from a YouTube video talking about single mothers in Korea. So there you go. What I like to do is I like to study it in sentence mode because I have the video on here. And the cool thing is that I like to uh, link while watching the video because the visual cues that I get are really good for me to actually guess the meanings of words and stuff like that. So I like to have this help as well while I'm listening. And uh, that's how I do it. Another cool thing is that if you go here, uh, now this is in Italian, but you can see like edit lesson you could technically, if you have YouTube videos in your target language and English as well, you could technically put the English translation by editing here, going on clips. There you go. Translation English. You could technically copy and paste the translation. I do this sometimes for uh, videos that are a little bit too difficult for me in my stage. So I like to have a little bit of help. Any help that I can get is good. So just to give you an example of how you could do it for this video, if you see here, these little three dots, there you go, open transaction, and you have the English. So you can do this on YouTube as well, but I like to do it on link, of course, because I can save words and phrases, et cetera. And uh, you can go here, copy, paste it over there, save it, and then you have it. And Little example is this. I've got another lesson here. If you go on sentence mode and you tap here, there you go. I have the English translation, which always helps me instead of having a um, Google Translate sentence, which can be good sometimes. But when you're a little bit confused about certain types of like syntax and grammar it can be of help using the English translation since it's you know, it's available. And this is for the big picture. So I like to use YouTube videos a lot, even though my Korean stage is not at a level where I can uh, understand them and enjoy them as much as I do with English videos. But that's good since I like the videos and I like to watch them and listen to them. That's good. Now, for another thing is that you can also use this website here which is called Korean Zero to Here. You can use it for English, Chinese, bunch of languages. And the cool thing that this site does is that if you, let's try to put like, uh, I don't know, a random word, but uh, let's try to see if it's good. Well, it got another word, but anyways. Uh, what you, you do is that you type a word in here and they give you YouTube videos related to the word that you're looking for. And if you tap here, they give you the um, basically the um, English translation and Korean, in my case, closed caption, if available. 
So if you want to speed up your YouTube subtitles process, then you can go here. Now, for the uh, nuts and bolts, I never do the review here because I hate flashcards and I hate being tested on stuff. I have like trauma from back in the day at university studying Japanese and having like a huge Anki deck of stuff trying to memorize all the kanji and I honestly I hate it. So if <laughs> I'm sometimes if I'm a little bit confused about some grammar points in Korean, which is a highly nuanced language and stuff. They have lots of little endings they put on stuff. What I like to do when I get curious about one of these, what I do is that I use a lot of tags and I use the notes section on the flashcards. So instead of doing the review like this, I like to filter over here. And I got a bunch of filters I can give you an example. Uh, this one's good. There you go. So these are all words and phrases that I saved that have this kind of pattern here. Uh, this kind of pattern is a pattern I've been confused about for some time. So what I do is that while I'm reading, if I'm confused about something, I just get the pattern, Google it, and then start to save everything I see with that pattern. And then while, while I'm reading, if again, I see that I'm getting a little bit confused or I'm not too sure about this kind of pattern, this mind you is like 5% of my time. 95% is reading, listening and everything like that. But 5% of my time is actually filtering stuff. And then this way with this window here, instead of doing the review, I can actually see how the words change with that pattern. I can see the translations and I can see all the sentences here so that I get them in context. And then if we try to click on, not, maybe not She's this, there you go. You see here in the notes that I pasted something from the internet that I found about that particular pattern. So what I like to do instead of review, I like to just see the phrases, see the context they're in, and then go into some of them and eventually I'll find, if I'm still confused, I'll find some explanations that I've pasted over here. And that's it. Great. Great, great, great. Yeah, a lot, yeah lot, super lot interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. First of all, I'm very impressed, Clara, and also you share my prejudices when it comes to language learning. Um, where do you find all those Korean videos? Is that something you could uh, share with us? Not necessarily yep. today, but on yep. the forum or, or even today. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I can uh, show Korean you. Korean is a toughie and it's tough finding good content and you've got yeah. a treasure trove there. So I'd be very interested. I'm not doing Korean right now, but when I do, I want to go there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Episodes. Maybe we could gather the, the links together maybe at the end and, and paste some in the forum or maybe in the, yeah. uh, this, this video will go up on YouTube. So maybe we can paste some stuff there. I don't know. We'll figure out where we can. Yeah, I can, post, I, I can post it as well. I mean, like I've got tons of resources actually, so I can, you know, I can share them no problem. And well, that website you, that, uh, that lets you search for YouTube yeah. videos was really- Let me show it to you again. Uh, let me show it to you again. Basically this, I found it, I don't remember if it was on YouTube on Reddit, but basically, there you go, this website here is actually a Canadian website <laughs> and um, it was built from a guy and he has it. I, let me show you again, because this is pretty interesting. They've got tons of languages. I haven't tried for other languages if it works, if it doesn't work, but I, I think it's going to be working. But let me show you again. Uh, when you go to the dictionary now, this the website is called Korean zero to hero it's not easy to find if you just google it so i would recommend you to just go ko.zero to hero.ca and just find it like this but if you go to the dictionary uh let me see if it's working or not but let me try again with it with an easier word i was trying uh hang up and see if it comes up uh there you go. 
it's giving me random words. I don't know why, but basically let's try with this. Maybe actually this one. So basically you click, there you go. You click on the YouTube video that is connected to the word that you're looking for. And it gives you the subtitles. In this case, it's Korean and it gives you the English. So what this does, and the interesting thing is basically if uh, you work with topics, so let's say that you like, I don't know, fishing, and you wanna learn about fishing in Korean, then you will go to this website, just write fishing. You'll get tons of YouTube videos connected to that um, topic. And then you just click on one and see, your, you'll see here, the subtitles if they have the closed caption subtitles otherwise you have like an error message saying sorry this youtube video doesn't provide subtitles and stuff like that when you do what it, my, my process is basically extremely easy i try to create on youtube a sort of feed so i want to let youtube understand that i like videos with korean subtitles uh, closed captions and how I do this is basically first stage is I go onto this website and I just write a random word of a topic I'm interested in and I find a couple of YouTube videos with subtitles. Then what I do next is I have here I created on YouTube and it's self-explanatory Korean CC uh, playlist. So what I do whenever I find a video like this, I would go into the YouTube channel and see if they have other videos with subtitles, because sometimes they do. And I would save each one of them. So I'm creating this sort of self-created feed. And then what you do is you look for other channels, related channels, and usually YouTube starts to understand that you like that kind Can of Can I ask stuff. a question, Clara? There was a yeah. question from Justin. Does this yeah. only pull videos with pre-made subtitles or also ones with auto-created subtitles? No, it's, it doesn't count auto-created subtitles. It only counts self-made subtitles. Okay. Now Thank for you. Korean, uh, another tip you can see here, I can show you, there's this Jamaic, that's called Korean Jamaic. Now Jamaic is basically a Korean startup. And what they do is that they offer subtitle work to YouTube creators. So basically, uh, Korean vlogger uh, uses this startup so that they can provide him the subtitles, usually in Korean English and tons of other languages. So I like to look for this, for Korean specifically, because you have the Korean and then always you're going to have English and then you're going to have a bunch of other languages. And I've no noticed problem. that this startup, the, the, the English subtitles are pretty, pretty good not native level, I would say, but pretty good. So you can use them no problem. And a couple of channels I can recommend you. This one here that you see here, this Yon Tong TV is basically a TV channel with uh, North Korean defectors who live in South Korea. And they talk about their experiences and you know, stuff. I, I, maybe I could interrupt again here. Just, uh, I think Mark's suggestion of uh, leaving links in the description box might be a good yeah. one. Because yeah. otherwise we, we want to get everyone here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And not everyone's into Korean, but this is amazing. Like if I had seen this when I was doing Korean, it would just uh, have, you know, accelerated my learning. I struggle yeah. to find good stuff in Korean. That's why I gave up Korean and went to Russian. Anyway. Yeah, that, the, the thing is that I think in every language, if you know how to do it, like if you learn how to create a self-created feed on YouTube, you're... You're going to have tons of reading and listening material. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Okay. Great. I, 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 uh, I'm, I'm sure there are questions. I mean, there's... Uh... Well, I picked up the few that came through on some that I saw on the Q&A. Okay. Here. And we have some stuff in, in YouTube. Uh... That was a great presentation, well, by the way, Clara. That's amazing. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Um, Someone's asking, when will Net the Netflix import start working on Chrome again? It is working on Chrome again. Uh, just make sure that you have the latest version of the extension installed. There was a, a, a period there where 
uh, Chrome had our extension on, in their review process, which took forever so that we asked people to download the extension from our site directly. But now you can go back to the Chrome store and uh, download the extension from, from there. Um, it should be working properly again with YouTube, with Netflix, everywhere. Um, yeah, we have a few questions for Steve, but I think we'll just save those for later or another time. Uh, someone's asking, I know videos people import into link become shared in the feed, but is there a way to view all video links that have been publicly imported? This would be a good feature. Um, only imported lessons that users like and which have an original URL actually will show up in the feed. Uh, so most videos that users import will not show up in the feed um, unless you like. So if you like your, if you import a YouTube video you think is great and you like that video, it will actually show up for other users, which is kind of good to know. Uh, but otherwise we can't really share everybody's videos in the feed unless they give us permission. So that's probably um, unlikely to happen, but we are working on a way to, uh, in our new version of the library where we, where we will be recommending sources of content to help people who aren't as able as Clara to find great content uh, on their own. Uh, okay, well, that's great, Clara, thanks very much. Uh, super interesting. I, I can't wait to try that zero to hero website out yep. myself. <laughs> awesome. Um, Robert, how about you? Maybe you could uh, follow up with uh, with how you use Link. Okay. Um, hey, hi, once again. Uh, I hope I don't stutter in the middle of my little ramble. So, well, First of all, uh, my name is Robert, and I live uh, in Chelyabinsk. There is a city located in the, uh, in, the, in the southern part of Russia. So I am 19, I study at university, and uh, right now I'm learning English, uh, a little bit of French, and also Chinese Mandarin. So right now I'm going to show you my screen. Well, uh, can you see it? Yeah. Okay, well, <clears throat> uh, first of all, I would like to start uh, with English. So I started learning English uh, a couple of years ago. So uh, I have made a lot of progress since then, and uh, that is thanks to S Steve Kaufman. Uh, I watched a lot of his videos and I was really inspired by that. So, well, uh, as you can see, I have uh, 30,000 uh, 30, words now in English and um, Mostly, uh, I read and listen. So as you can see, I have uh, a couple of things here that I'm currently reading. Uh, that is a selection from the discourses of Epictetus, Sons and Lovers, and recently I finished Down and Out in Paris and London. So, well, there is nothing new under the sun. And uh, since I have been watching uh, videos of Steve quite a lot. So uh, basically how I learn uh, languages is through a massive input. Um, well, let me show you my stats. Okay, let's... Well, as you can see, I mostly uh, read and listen. When it comes to speaking, uh, I don't speak a lot. Um, uh, I mean, as you can hear, because my um, accent isn't very good, but well, uh, and what I want to say is that um, a lot of people stumble when it comes to uh, 
going through the phase that is also known as the plateau. Well, um, uh, that's, for example, when they are going through a period uh, from B2 to C1. Well, I don't exactly uh, would say that uh, I am at B2 level, but uh, all I want to say is for English learners out there, I would uh, recommend some things. For example, uh, a site called Project Gutenberg, where you can find a lot of uh, free books, for example, uh, like this. That's very helpful, and you can import them into Link and study there. Also, I would recommend a site called Planet eBook. Uh, it also has a lot of books uh, in English. So, here we go. Uh, well, uh, from English, I would love to uh, change to Chinese. So uh, at university, I study Chinese Mandarin. And uh, right now, I'm having a problem. Uh, and that problem is, uh, uh, like many of you know, uh, when you first start to learn any language, you um, don't have any chance to uh, uh, listen or read uh, interesting content. That is a big problem. So what I do is I uh, listen to uh, mini stories at Link. So that helps very much. And um, I add them to my playlist and listen uh, on my phone when I, for example, wash my dishes or something. Uh, doing uh, work around home, I mean. And uh, the biggest problem that I have right now is that uh, I'm uh, in that stage uh, where I cannot listen or read to interesting content. So I haven't found uh, anything that would uh, interest me really. So um, what's... Uh, 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 like I said, that is a problem that many people face. So uh, uh, <laughs> what what's, uh, I would love to share with you is that, uh, first of all, uh, in order to achieve success in language learning, you have to find content that is interesting for you. So without that, you won't succeed in any way, like uh, I'm having a problem right now with my Chinese. But uh, to give you an example, uh, in my group uh, at university, uh, I do uh, better than um, most of my cl classmates, and that's uh, thanks to Link, because uh, uh, as you can see, uh, traditional ways of learning uh, another language are not working. So uh, the main thing is inputs and you have to put a lot of time uh, listening and reading uh, in order to have some base. And uh, many people worry about speaking. And what I would say to them is that uh, uh, when it comes uh, to speaking, you don't have to worry about it, just uh, read and listen. Um, I think uh, my, uh, my way of learning languages uh, is very reminiscent of Steve Kaufman or uh, Stephen Krashen for, uh, for the matter. So uh, yeah, thank you for giving me time to share my thoughts with you. Yeah, great. Uh, thanks very much, Robert. And uh, yeah, your English is great. I don't, don't be bashful. It's 4.30. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you.
No, not at all. Uh, and, anyway, and, yeah. I, I will give some when I kind of summarize at the end. I'll comment a bit about the inter, finding content in Chinese and that whole issue of getting from the mini stories to interesting content. But I'll save that till the end. Okay. So uh, yeah, well, that's that's great. Uh, nice to hear that uh, that you're obviously doing better than the rest of your classmates in at university in Chinese. I have no doubt that's true. <laughs> um, I guess we should, uh, let's see what the kind of questions we're getting um, before moving on. See if there are any, let's see. Trick is to, uh, oh. Yeah, I guess, yeah, maybe, I, I, again, why don't we just deal with it at the end? That's probably best. Um, we have uh, some people gathering those questions, so we'll we'll, we'll say them towards the end, and, and then we can we can all uh, participate in answering questions. So so why don't we move on to Francisco next, and maybe again, please uh, yeah, tell us where you are and and what you're doing with Link. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for for this conversation, for this opportunity to meet, to discuss. Well, I am Francisco. I am from Spain. I am a professor at the, at the university here in Granada. I am, I am in lockdown right now, very hard one of that. I go out once a week for groceries and that's it. I'm waiting for the situation to, to improve. We hope, <laughs> we hope it will be soon. And well, you know, you know, you know how this is going. So it's, 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 very, very, it's very, very nice to, to get to talk with you and discuss and as Steve, as Steve said, uh, to, to think about other things. Okay, so a little bit of background before I, I share my screen here. Well, I, well, I, I, I am very passionate about languages. I, I, I began learning languages back, back in the day so when there was no links, there no internet, uh, very, <laughs> very few possibilities to get uh, material and so on. And the funny thing is that uh, a bit by myself, I discovered, say I discovered a method which is similar to the one that uh, Skip Crashen uh, uh, researched uh, the one that uh, uh, that Link uh, proposes, uh, because I, I I really found out that I, I really wanted to uh, to learn languages and it was very hard in school, so I I, I just got uh, some some novels and in the beginning were novels in French from my from my father, and then I I just tried to, to understand it was very hard very very hard but you do learn you do learn you try and you learn and this is my approach really and I even remember when I was trying to learn some Latin that I found a, a program back in the day, in which there was the, um, uh, uh, the, the, war in, the war in France by Julius Caesar, but you could click on the, on, the, on the words and get a translation, and they thought that's wonderful. And this is a little bit what, what uh, Link offers um, on, on a steroid, let's say, because there are so, ma so many more features. So this is my approach, really, to, to, to language learning. And what I would like to share with you today is that, is there a general approach because, because link, right now link is my main, let's say my main tool, my, my key tool to learn languages. But I still think that we need a, like a strategy, a general strategy in which link fits in, in general. I'd like to, to share my, my own in case it, 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 it is helpful. And for this, uh, for this I, will, I will share my screen because right now, let me see, okay, here it is. Okay, that's my that's my screen over here, and I think it's interesting because well I'm 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 addicted to Link really so I dabble in, in lots of languages really I learned some Norwegian when I went to Oslo in the, uh, for Christmas when I could I could still travel and I I really dabble in lots of languages but right now I think it's interesting because I am beginning a new one because uh, I'm in lockdown so I will, <laughs> I will I will I will take the opportunity to learn which is Japanese. And there's another one which is the which has been my main target for a long time, which is Russian. So I I'll, I'll try to to show a little bit how I learned in the beginning, how I learned when I when I already have some some level in general. And well, and for Japanese, well, Japanese is, is great because um, it, 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 um, when I started Russian, I didn't know Link, so I did a couple of things that really uh, made me lose time. And now I'm I'm learning the way I think I, I like learning. 
And what I do is like, as I said, it's, it's a general strategy because I, I do use, I like knowing about the language and knowing, and knowing how the language works and how, 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 what makes the language tick. And for that I use, I, I use books, okay? And I, one thing I like a lot is, is Asimil, okay? So I do use Asimil, as a Japanese Asimil. I use it in French, it's called lettering because I, I, I get to, to brush up on my French as I learn Japanese. And before link, I, I just did that. That's good, that's great. But on the, other, on the other hand, it's very, very frustrating because there's so many words that you, you know you can't learn. And as Emil, uh, the book acts as if you really could learn them and you can't, you really can't. And right now, I still use uh, um, uh, uh, Asimil. I think it makes me, it gives a very good introduction to the language. It makes me learn, let's say grammar or rules or whatever. But I don't wait to finish. I, 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 I dive into Link at the same time. And I, and I trust a Link to learn vocabulary for real. Because the way I learn vocabulary is just like this. It's, it's a, a, my approach is very minimalist, really. For example, in, in Japanese, my language that I'm beginning right now, really is very minimalistic. What I do is I find something that I like. I, I agree with Robert when he said, uh, get, finding something that interesting is, is paramount. So what I do is, is I really like uh, stories and not, not simple stories. For example, lean mini stories, I do use them, but it's not my cup of tea really. But it's like a story that really, uh, that I really can get into, really can get interested in. And when I'm beginning, I've been, I've been very happy because I found a couple here on Link and I, I, I thank the collaborators that, uh, that uploaded these stories. For example, right now I'm reading this let me see if I, it will load faster. No way. It takes so long. And this is a story. It's called Yuki, Mono, Yuki no Monogatari. It's a Yuki story. And this is interesting because it's rather simple, but it's, uh, it has ninjas in it. It has princesses and so on. So it really, it really, it really helps you a lot in the beginning. And then I agree with, with Clara that when I, in, the, in this kind of languages, nothing other, not in Russian, for example, but in Japanese, I guess in Korea as well. Okay, I don't know what, what this is. I I do use the the sentence view. A link for those of, uh, that don't know, you you can you can read by page like this, or you can read by sentence. And when you're beginning in a language such as uh, Japanese, that helps a lot because uh, understanding the structure of the sentence is is important. So I have my my sentence here. And I try to understand the structure. What is it all about? And uh, and and I, I go on and, and make and make some link. And very often, once I more or less know what the, the sentence is all about, I do translate the sentence because I think that it, it makes me, especially in the beginning, it makes me see if I understood the structure correctly. And well, in general. And I will go back to now, now to Russian because it's, 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 it's more clear now, but a couple of things of the Japanese. In general, my approach uh, for all levels is like this. What I, what I think is this, I think, well, this is a story and I like this story. It's about princesses, it's about ninjas, I like it. So what I try to do is just, let's say, decipher the story. I want to know what the story is all about. And that's, uh, that's, my, that's my understanding of the way I think about comprehensible input. It's like you have a message, it may be written, it may be spoken, and you want to know what it's all about. And because you don't know the language very, very well, you have to decipher it, you have to make an effort. And there are some, some words, some parts that help you because you know them, because you, you, you can kind of uh, guess what they mean. So like this, for example, the Yuki here, Yuki is, is, the, is the name of the heroine in the story, it means also snow, I know that. I know that, so it's a, it, it's a word that helps me. If it helps me, I declare it known. It's a known word for me because it's helping me understand. And there are words that I don't, that don't, that don't help me because I don't understand them. And then I, I have to look them up. Here are links, links make, makes this very, very easy. And because the, this is not helping really, I make a link. And this is the general approach. It's very simple, very, very simple, very minimalistic, as I said, and that's what I do. I try to read interesting things at the same time as I, I, uh, I have a look at some information about the language and I, and I try to decipher the message. And then 
I listen, and when I listen, it's, it's a bit the same thing. When I'm like, when I'm beginning, like uh, I'm here, I don't understand very much. So I just try to follow. I already read the story, and I, I like to follow when the story I am. Something help me, something don't help me. This is what I do for for a long time, really. And I I alternate between stories and between some information about the language and the language itself, some of the lessons about grammar and so on. This is what I'm doing in Japanese because I just started really. I think I'd like to show you about Russian because this 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 shows the other levels. Once you more understand understand the language, when you are better at the language. So I will show you my approach in Russian. Mm -hmm. And the main thing is that I, as I progress in the language, what I try to do is mm, really go to native content as, uh, as soon as I can, really. And that's, that's hard, really. That's hard. How do you get to, to native content? That's what uh, that's where really uh, Link really helps because, because Link helps you read and understand things that are much beyond your level. Uh, that would be very, very hard for you to understand on your own. And it really, really helps. I think what I do little by little is I, I go on to more complicated lessons for a while. I do I do go back to, to lessons, uh, to intermediate lessons over time. But as soon as I can, I move on to native content. And as I move to native content, I do use YouTube as Cara does, but I do it, I do it, I do it rather differently here. There is a time where I try to um, to split what I read. And what I listen to. So for a while, I have the transcript, I have the lessons, and then listen to the same things that I read. But as soon as I can, I try to to stop doing that. I try to 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 read a, a, a link, and what I read is a novel. So I try to I try to go on to read novel as soon as I can because I like novels because I think they give you lots and lots and lots of vocabulary. Because I, I do, I do read novels in in the in that were written originally in the language, so they help me understand the, the culture as well. So let me let me, let me see. Let me see over here, and a lot of the content is content content that I upload to Link. So I still I still go to the intermediate uh, lessons like Evgeny Evgeny lessons in Russian, which are very good. But I, I, I do try to, to move to, to native language, to native content. And for example, over here, and I read a lot, a lot of novels in Russian <laughs> on Link, lots of them, some of them quite difficult, really. It would, would, would have been very difficult to understand at that level uh, on my own. Have quite a few, some of them are, are Soviet sci-fi, uh, sci <laughs> I like some of them, uh, a couple of them over here, Ariel, I read, um, uh, the only exception to, to the rule that I read uh, content in uh, reading in the original language is uh, Murakami, I read uh, novel of Murakami in Russian as well. And I've read um, Master and Margarita, it's a wonderful, wonderful novel, but so difficult. But I could, re could, could read it, because, thanks, to, thanks to Link again. Uh, I've read this, this series, it's very interesting for me. It's a, it's a, it's a series of uh, Russian bestsellers. It's called Krasny Tsepi, like uh, Red Change. And this is like a thriller and 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 a bit of uh, fantasy, but in the in a modern setting in Saint Petersburg with a bit of humor. I've read some some uh, tall story. I I'm still reading really War and Peace because it's so, so, so big. So little by little, I I still I still uh, as I said read uh, some lessons, some intermediate lessons, but I really try to get to native content, and I really try to read. Uh, and I use Link mostly to read. And as for listening, what I do is I go to YouTube, but I try to find things that I can understand without subtitles. And I, I try to do that very rather soon. That's my own approach. Why, why do I do that? It's because I think mm, there is a tendency for us as learners to get hooked on the idea that you have to understand everything, every, every single word. It, because we have got our transcripts and we have our audio, we, we get used to that. And I like, I really like to train myself, train my brain to a situation where you really don't understand everything, but you can, as I said, it's, a, it's a, like a deciphering of the message, but you can follow the story. And I do that by steps. 
I do use some subtitles sometimes. Uh, yeah, there are subtitles in, in only but in, in channels uh, that uh, I will show you one of them. Channels that are that are for uh, learners. Like I like a lot this this channel, Russian with Max, and then you have subtitles and you have transcriptions on links and so on. But at the same time, I try to find real content. Yeah, I begin. I will show you the beginning. This is the beginning. In the beginning, I what I what works for me is that I I try to find uh, videos about activities that I like. That I know something about that are physical, and because I know some of the language, because I've already been been studying a link, I try. I, I like a lot this one, for example. It's uh, it is about um, <laughs> it's about skating, skating on ice for for beginners. I like that a lot, and and I found that, and I I and it was, I, I I could understand most of the things. Part of it I understand because I know the words because I've been studying for I don't know maybe a few months. Part of it because I see it, and part of it because I anticipate what's going to happen. And th this is my approach to comprehensible input. And, and, and for a long, long time, I do, this is what I do. I, 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 I listen to some extent links, but I mostly read novels on links, and I try to get vocabulary there. And then I try to understand this kind of, uh, this kind of things. I begin with this kind of videos so they're very physical, with a lot of context. And then I graduate to more complicated ones, little by little, and I end up uh, watching series or films, uh, things like that. And once I have a good uh, understanding, I, I begin talking, and I, I try to go on an immersion. I, I've been uh, in Russia for a couple of times in, in, in immersive uh, experiences. Uh, last time was very interesting because I was on a, on a tour in kayak. And on a lake in Russia, there's everybody where Russians around me, and they were very curious how 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 I how I, I go there, Katya to the Babal, <laughs> and so on. And, and this is the this is the last, the, the, not the last really, but this is the, this is one of the um, um, let's say of the uh, of the things that I work towards really get into. An, but before that, it takes very long. This uh, we're really, uh, in Russia, I've been I've been studying for for a few years now, and this this is more or less the the, the my general approach. Uh, to, to language learning and, and and as I said, link really bridges the the um, bridge the, the, this gap between between a beginner level and uh, and a level in which you can really understand native content, which is very 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 difficult. And this is the for me this is the most difficult part, the hardest part in language learning, and that's what I use link for. Okay, this is <laughs> this is everything. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks very much, Francisco. That was uh, very interesting. I, I, how's your uh, skating? Must be pretty good if you're watching all those videos. <laughs> yeah, well, I like, I, I like especially in length skating. Okay. We're still looking at Francisco's screen here. We might. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. We're still looking at Francisco's screen. We might unshare oh, yes, the screen yes, so that we can to, see yeah. each yes, other yes. better. Right. Let okay. me see how I. Ah, yes, here it is. Here it is. Stop sharing. Yeah, here it is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Anyway, thanks very much. There were a couple questions there. Um, first of all, uh, what, what, let's see. Francis, someone, someone's asking what your preferred sites are for finding novels. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is, this is, a, this is a, a very important part in my own, in my own process. And um, it really depends on the language. For Russian, for Russian, it, it, it's easy okay, because there is a there, there are a couple of, uh, of online bookshops, especially Litres, where you can get very very cheap books, and, and there is no DRM, no protection whatsoever. So you get your you get your your file and you import it into Link, and that's wonderful. Sometimes I do get from the public domain because I, as I said, I I I have already read um, quite quite a bit of War and Peace, and that I, I got from public domain. Sometimes I do that. For other languages, it gets more, it gets more complicated. So I really, I, I really have to look for either I get novels for in, in a public domain, which tend to be old, or I um, or or really have to 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 find uh, an, an online um, an online bookshop where you where you don't have protection for the for the books, and that's complicated. And that's one of the problems they have, for example, in Indonesian. It's another language that I am trying to to learn and it's very hard to find good uh, can i make a suggestion yeah maybe we'll try and you know, go ahead 
Yeah, I, know, I was going to say, I'm quite prepared to put all the links that I've used for Polish and for Czech and for uh, like Russian, Litres, for example, is very good. Put up all the links that I use. If we can all put up the different links that we use, different resources where we find books, maybe people watching, you know, it might be fun if we could collect in the comment section to this yeah. video, just a whole bunch of links. Or to, maybe even on the, uh, on our forum at link. Uh, we have done this in the past, but we should perhaps do it again because it gets yeah. buried. Yeah. Okay. Or in either place. Um, okay. I mean, I think um, there are some more questions uh, here. Um, some of them are sort of more general, not necessarily targeting uh, our speakers. Uh, so then, yeah, maybe that maybe the next thing. What, Steve? Why don't you give a little? Uh, yeah, I might just uh, say. It, here, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think all of us are learning in more or less the same way, uh, and of course, we are keen language learners. Now, there are some people who are not so confident, so experienced, and so forth. I must say that, Robert, for you to say that you've been learning English for two years, your English is phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. Uh, and of oh, course, Clara, with her six languages, uh, and uh, Francisco, who bounces from Japanese to Russian to Indonesian. I mean, the, we are the keeners, right? Uh, a lot of people are less confident. Um, and we all touched on some of the same issues, like how do we get started? Well, I, I have fallen in love with the mini stories as, a, as an approach. Uh, I spent uh, yesterday and today, I was doing a lot of cleaning house because after all, we got nothing else to do, right? So cleaning house, I would listen two hours yesterday, two hours, no, yesterday and the day before to the mini stories. And they're just in, in Levantine Arabic now because I want to get some sense of the differences because even when I listen to standard Arabic, they use like colloquial Arabic in there and I don't know what they're saying. So I listened to for four hours of Levantine Arabic and I was reminded of what uh, this, this book I often refer to, Manfred Spitzer, where he talks about how the brain learns. And that basically by the first year of its life, a baby has heard and is familiar with most of the structures in their native language. And uh, if they had to rely on being taught these structures in the classroom, the way we teach foreign languages, most people couldn't speak their native language. So that, uh, and so I'm listening to all this uh, Levantine Arabic and I'm getting a sense of Levantine Arabic. I can't necessarily understand every word, but I'm getting a sense of the structure which again relates to what Francisco said about listening to things that he doesn't fully understand. And it's important to, to and I've, I've criticized this tendency in language instruction to ask comprehension questions like, did you understand? And my reaction always is, it's none of your business with our understand. But maybe I understood a half, maybe I, whatever I understood was good for me. And the child is the same way. The child doesn't understand everything. It doesn't identify all the structures. The child just accepts what they understand and the rest just flies by them. And that's okay too. So uh, I think this idea that we, we kind of obviously have to, good language learners live with uncertainty, not understanding, it doesn't matter. Whatever we get is good, what we miss is too bad. And uh, so, you know, many stories I think are good in that sense. And then we all want to pro progress to where we can get to the really good stuff that we enjoy. And again, I agree with Francisco. I mean, Asimil promises that with their one little book, you're going to get the B2. <laughs> are you joking you know what i mean you're not even close because to be at v2 v2 you have to consume so much of the language so much of the language and and what they offer you in asimil is maybe three hours or whatever it is and of course the the, the ramp up is phenomenal for the first 30 40 lessons it's very easy and all of a sudden whoop <laughs> i don't understand anything anymore so uh no th th but they have to sell their books so it's a long road as someone said that plateau there's even a pre-plateau which is kind of where where i am where i can't really understand my arabic podcast very well uh and, and so hard to get a toehold because there's so many new words and and it's tough and you just have to keep doing it but one of the things again that the manfred spitzer said was Whenever we exceed our expectations, the brain gets a bit of a dopamine kick. So maybe we should keep our expectations down or something, or at least recognize that when you understand something that you didn't understand before, that's good. And, and on the other hand, he also says, you know, we talk about motivation. Part of the problem is that we are naturally motivated. The brain wants to learn. We are naturally motivated. And yet we do things to demotivate us. And, and amongst those is all these drills and questions where 
you know, like I, I bought this book for Egyptian Arabic and chapter one, they show you a picture of, you know, of a teapot and, uh, you know, a cat or whatever they think you should learn you know, in chapter one. And then right away, they want to test you on it. You know, they show you a picture of a teapot and a word. Is this right? Like, I'm going to get them wrong. It's very demotivating to do all this stuff. So what, what we do, I think, uh, all of us here and hopefully people who use Link is try to have activities that give you a sense of achievement and satisfaction. Oh, and one other thing I was going to share with you is, is uh, Spencer points out that the brain likes novelty. And I've mentioned this before. Uh, so I always find that I do lesson one, like I started in a Persian or Arabic lesson one. I don't understand a thing. I've looked a few words up. I still don't understand it. And then I want to go to lesson two. I still haven't learned lesson one, but I want to go to lesson two. The brain likes novelty. So even if I don't understand it, I want to go to something new. I don't want to stay, you know, pounding my head against this, you know, story that I just don't understand. I'd rather not understand another story because it's new. So I think those are some of the things that our brain likes to do and, and that we should do and that go against the traditional approach that you have to master this and you can't move forward until you have mastered this. And of course, we don't master it. Uh, I took some notes here again on, um, oh yeah, on this other, one thing that I found very good in Persian is that I found this collaborator in Iran who is, she just tells stories about herself and what she did and she traveled in India. And now she's also producing a history of Iran in her own words, very simply narrated. And so I happen to be in, interested in history. So this is kind of like the pre-plateau. This is not yet a podcast. It's something that, that kind of slides you away from the many stories towards perhaps being able to eventually access something more serious. And I've often you know, wish that, that if we could get this kind of content in Chinese, for example, I was lucky when I uh, studied Chinese that we had a, a simplified uh, history of China. So I'm always interested in, 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 in history. So to me, that was interesting. But if we can get people to talk naturally and then transcribe, but talk naturally about things that might be of interest to people, that could be a step towards that. So basically, yeah, that's kind of what I, I uh, had to say here. Yeah, basically that. Is. I'm very impressed with the three of you. Uh, I'm amazed at how you know creative you are and finding ways to learn. Oh, and I should say, Robert, Canadians know Chelyabinsk because we know there's a hockey team there called Tractor Chelyabinsk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. maybe most people have never heard of Chelyabinsk, but in Canada, we've heard of Chelyabinsk. Anyway, so great uh, session. And uh, I think we got to do this some more and get other people to uh, participate. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, I think with that, maybe we'll, we'll wrap things up. I know we had uh, other people anxious to speak, but uh, we'll try to fit you in in a future. Yeah, we can do it at different time zones and so that yeah. it's convenient for people in different parts of the world. For sure. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Well. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk so to you and, and stay safe, everybody. Yes, absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.